Is it true that the zigzag diet can take you from here to here, helping you lose fat while also keeping you healthier? Let's find out. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Vella from ProPhysique.com and today I got a great question on my Instagram direct message. So keep messaging me on Instagram guys or leave a comment below where I can address your question directly. Hey Paul, what is your opinion on zigzag dieting? Which, by what I understand, consists of working your way up to more calories for midweek, then going back down, for example, 1,200 to 1,500, 1,600 to 2,000, 1,800 to 1,600. Thanks in advance. First, let me preface this by saying, if your diet has a name, it probably sucks, right? Whenever I hear about a fad diet, what I find is that it's creating excitement around a philosophy or a theory that will work temporarily, but in the long term, it's going to give you problems. However, a zigzag diet may in fact not even be a diet. It's more of a philosophy. So I wanna talk about the four real benefits that I see from dieting in this manner. Now, the specific diet, the zigzag diet, I couldn't really find anything exactly, but every diet, in my opinion, that is successful has something built into it for recovery. The zigzag diet being no different. Years ago, there was a very popular dieting craze where people would eat very clean, very healthy for a few days. Then they would have a cheat meal. Now, while this cheat meal was essentially a large increase in calories, what I find is that the mental restriction on food choices all week, leading to unleashing that at the end of the week, starts to create eating disorder behaviors, which we do not wanna do. I do not put morals or values on food. There are no bad foods. And if you're watching this video right now and you're immediately shaking your head, I'll let you know that this weekend I had some alcohol, I had some donuts, I had some pizza, I ate out, and I'm still the same weight. Why? Because I understand how to balance and fit things into my life and my routine that will help me accomplish my goals. However, the majority of the time, yes, I am eating whole clean foods, but those foods are not bad. If you label them bad, you're only giving yourself problems in the future. And if it's something that you don't necessarily wanna eat morally, ethically, that doesn't mean it's bad for everybody else. It's just bad for you and that's okay. But the cheat meal did represent an increase in calories. Likewise, years later, when I got into bodybuilding and fitness, I was given an approach called flexible dieting where we would include what I would call a refeed day. My first coach gave me high carb days. Now the difference between a cheat day and a refeed day is that a refeed is a specific calorie allotment. Meaning, let's say I was on a 2000 calorie deficit my refeed day might be 2,500 calories or 3,000 calories, depending on where I'm at. The majority of that, I will say, for a bodybuilder, is gonna be carbohydrate-based. So, if you're gonna add 1,000 calories from carbohydrates, that's gonna be another 250 carbohydrates on a given day. You're gonna be eating a lot of carbs from things like rice and potatoes because your fats don't go up. And when people hear that carbs go up, they get all excited, but I promise you, carbs can be pretty boring when you gotta keep your calories restricted. So, what is the benefit of a day like this? It's gonna have some benefits. It's gonna have some benefits to restoring muscle glycogen, filling out those muscle cells. Mentally, it helps you because you see your body looking better, but it also gives you some benefits to hormones, gives you some benefits to a reprieve from being in a caloric deficit. Sometimes the feeling of being full is something that we miss when we're dieting. So you see the philosophy here that there are these things built in. Even years later, there was a study done on an approach called the Matador diet, where people would essentially be in a deficit consecutively for two weeks, and then they would bring their calories up to maintenance consecutively for two weeks. What they found was the people that took this approach lost more body fat, kept more muscle, and when they did a follow-up with them a year later, they had kept more body fat off than a group of people who did not use the diet break approach. So. It does tell us that there's a lot of benefit to this idea. Now, zigzag dieting, to me, doesn't have a specific name, but I will say this, the philosophy of zigzagging or bringing your calories up and bringing them down is something I fully believe in. Now, the reason for this is because a lot of us can do hard things, especially when we know there's some benefit coming at the end. If I was to tell you, listen, you're gonna lose weight, you're only gonna get 1500 calories for five days, but at the end of that, you're gonna get two days at 2,200 calories, guess what? A lot of people can work through that. It's just like saying, hey, I promise you, if you work 80 hours this week, you're gonna get double the pay, right? So as long as you know you're putting in some effort and you're gonna get some reward, this is where I find the value. You gotta remember guys, 
The physiology of weight loss is only part of the equation. Yes, if you were to take the zigzag approach, keep your calories the same every day, keep your cardio the same every day, you'd likely get the same result. However, psychology is a big part of this. And I know personally, there are times where I would rather push myself a little harder and get there and get some recovery. And I find that with my athletes, especially my bodybuilders, shout out to my three athletes this weekend that won overall titles around the country. Well, I'm bringing their food up at various points throughout dieting so that they get a couple days at a time of recovery. And then I bring their calories back down. I think of this like a slingshot. When you are bringing the food up, you're loading that slingshot. And when the calories go back down, boom, they're off and running. Their bodies are ready to make more progress. Their inflammation is down. Their digestion is improved. Their hormones have improved. Their psychology is improved. They're excited about being in a caloric deficit again. Yes, maybe that makes us crazy, but when you're trying to get lean, trying to lose body fat, okay? Remember, body fat is not something that we add quickly. For most of us, it's something that we've been adding for years and years. So you've gotta find tools that allow you to do it. If you guys need some help, you can always reach out to me for coaching. I'll put a link below to set up a free consultation. But the idea here is I wanna give you guys the tools to do it yourself. So try this. Don't be too crazy, but if you're in a caloric deficit for a long period of time, try raising your calories up by 15, 20% for a couple days and see just how much it benefits you to go back to your previous approach and keep things moving forward. Hopefully this helps you guys out. I want more questions for you guys. I want more content this week. I wanna help you guys on your journeys and I'll talk to you tomorrow.